so here uh, we we know the algorithm for gauss seidel iterated solution method uh, first uh, first step in this method is first we need to form the vibus matrix so here we can see we, we need to form the vibus that is admittance matrix then we need to assume the initial conditions uh, assume initial count r is equal to 0 for for 0 zero iteration for first iteration r is equal to 0 and bus voltages we need to assume and the set iteration count r is equal to 0 and let us take the maximum number of iterations r is equal to r max and let uh, the bus count is equal to 2 because the first bus is always the slack bus so the voltage magnitude and delta at bus 1 uh, will be always known and delta v max is equal to 0 so whatever the change in delta v for two successive iterations uh, let us consider it as maximum value as 0 so after this let us check a bus whether it is a pv bus or pq bus so is i is a P, pv bus if the considered bus is a pv bus if s if s if it is a pv bus then we need to compute a reactive power and angle delta at the pv bus because the p and v are both are mentioned we need to compute q and delta so if it is a pv bus s then we need to compute q that is q of Q I of R plus one. That is, we need to calculate the reactive power. Now, once you know calculate the reactive power, we need to check the limits of the reactive power. So, reactive power should uh, should fall within the minimum and maximum limits. First, let us check for the maximum limits. The calculated is calculated Q I for R plus one iteration is less than the Q I max. Is less than the Q I max. Then, uh, if it is satisfies S. Yes, then we need to check for the minimum limits minimum limits that is whatever the calculated value what are the calculated qi value it is greater than the qi minimum qi minimum so here if it is yes the, the whatever the computed qi that uh, for a pv bus will be retained and we'll move on to calculate the delta angle delta that is compute delta i That is, this delta I can be obtained from the, this voltage equation V I of R plus one delta is equal to V I specified into at an angle of delta. This delta will be the unknown for us, so we need to compute the angle delta. V I specified for P bus will V for P bus will be specified, so it is V I specified. If the limits are uh, goes beyond beyond the limits, uh, beyond the reach, whatever the maximum limits we have set, maximum minimum minimum limit set. If the calculated value goes beyond this minimum and maximum value, then it is like we need to consider the particular bus as a PQ bus, particular bus as PQ bus. We need to compute the voltage. We need to compute the voltage. So uh, and if it is goes out more than the maximum value, then Q value is equal to Q I max. If it is less than minimum value, then Q value is equal to Q I min. Under these both conditions, we need to compute the We need to treat that bus as PQ bus, and we need to compute the VI. We need to compute the VI. So once you compute the VI, again, if it is not a PV bus, if it it is a PV bus, we have computed all these things. If it is not a PV bus, the the only possibility is it is a PQ bus. So if it is not a PV bus, PQ bus for a PQ bus, we know that the quantities that are calculated are voltage and angle. So same again, we need to compute the here you can see. We need to compute the voltage V I V I of R plus one. There we will get the angle also. So next uh, we need to update, uh, calculate similarly for the next buses V I is equal to V I of R plus one. We need to increase the uh, bus numbers I is equal to I plus one. I is equal to I plus one. So is I is greater than n. So because uh, n where n is the number of buses in the system. So is I is greater than n. So if I is greater than n. Then we need to check the delta max. If delta max is within the delta max is within the tolerance value, if yes, then we need to stop. We need to calculate the line flows, slack, uh, slack bus voltage losses, and we need to display the result. If this change in voltage for two successive uh, iterations is not uh, is not less than the tolerance value, then we need to go for the next iteration. Uh, r is equal to r plus one. Let r is equal to r plus one, and till uh, is r is less than r max. So we have set the number of iterations as r is equal to r max. So if r is less than r max, if yes, 
then we need to go back again uh, to, to the starting point then we need to carry out the next iteration if it is no then uh, we need to display the result as no convergence no convergence because once you reach the number of iterations mention uh, maximum number of iterations still we did not get the uh, desired value then we need to display it as uh, no convergence so this is the flow chart of load flow solution gauss seidel iterative method gauss seidel iterative method here if it is if i is greater than n if no then we need to again go to uh, compute again we should go here and we should check the uh, bus buses again we should uh, compute the uh, variables that is either it may be a voltage or angle or reactive power depending on the type of the bus so this is the flow chart of gauss seidel iterative technique in the next session uh, we will see the flow chart for newton raphson method in polar coordinates thank you